Joining us now is Katie Gray, Supervisor for PR and Events at the Toronto Zoo. Thank you, Katie, for joining us and bringing Lily the Moose. Thank you for having both of us. <laughs> uh, well, let's, let's share with us, uh, for any Canadian, why is it important to, to come here uh, during our spare time? So the Toronto Zoo is a wonderful place for new Canadians to come and visit to learn a little bit more about our Canadian animals, Canadian environment, wilderness. It's in a beautiful natural setting here in the Rouge National Park, which is one of Canada's largest national urban parks. Uh, and I think it's a great place for people to learn about the species at risk in Canada and all the work that the Toronto Zoo is doing to save animals in the wild and largely thanks to some of these animals we have here at the right. Toronto Zoo. Well, can you give us some details on the conservation efforts uh, that are happening here at the zoo? Yeah, so we've got a number of breeding programs um, with all animals from around the world, but we do have a number of our Canadian species that are a focal point for us. Being Canada's largest zoo, we have a huge commitment to conservation and making sure that we are making a lot of efforts to teach people about animals, how they can help save some of these species in the wild, and our animals that are here at the Toronto Zoo in many ways act as ambassadors for their counterparts in right. the wild. So, you know, we let people see the animals here, but then try to tell the story of what their challenges are in the wild and how we can help them. Mm -hmm. Now, for, for people who are new to the country, um, what sorts of programs or events are going on at the zoo that people might not be aware of but you can share with us. Yeah, so we've got a number of opportunities for people to engage and get involved here at the Toronto Zoo. Uh, the best place to find out about anything is our website, the mm -hmm. torontozoo.com. Uh, that houses all the information but we have a number of public events. We've also got some great education programs. So our education team has programs for all ages. We've got some for adults, some for families, some for kids and all of them have very specific themes. So you know it's it's a program about learning maybe about Canadian species, maybe about some of our conservation programs. So anything you're interested in there's probably a program that would be of interest to you. Right. And I understand that the zoo also offers volunteering opportunities. Give us some details on that. Yeah, so if you wanted to get more involved, uh, we have a volunteer, a very robust volunteer program. We do ask for, uh, you know, a pretty long-term commitment, uh, but it's only a few hours a week, it mm -hmm. could be. Um, so if people are look, have a little bit of downtime, a little bit of spare time, and they really are passionate about animals and getting to learn more about animals and also right. teach people who come to the zoo about animals, uh, this is a great program for you. It's got a very big learning process. Um, so there's a big, you know, uh, teaching module behind mm -hmm. it, but it's very interesting and it's our, our volunteers absolutely love their their experience here right, for sure now when we were talking before the interview we talked about cultural connections between animals and people mm -hmm. what did you mean by that so all of our areas in the zoo uh, rather than going somewhere and just seeing a whole bunch of animals we've we've tried to design the zoo in a way that is zoo geographic which means that when you walk into an area where an animal is there's plants, there's graphics, there's visuals that really connect you to where that animal is from. So I think for people coming from other parts of the world that are new to Canada, it's also a great opportunity for them to reconnect maybe with some of the animals that they're familiar with and right. in environments that they're familiar with. But certainly for our Canadian species, we try to make sure that there's a connection between not just the animals, mm -hmm but this you know, country we live in and all the other geographic social pieces that go along with that. So it's, it's a really, you know, it's an intricate sort of thing. It's not just about showing animals, about teaching people about the animals, where they're from, and all the other experiences these animals have where they're in their homeland. Right, now with the zoo, it's obviously a fun um, activity for a family to mm -hmm. enjoy. Um, are there any unique factors about the Canadian section of the zoo that people should know about? Well we've got some of our Canadian species are spread out. There's a few different areas that we can find them. Uh, our moose for example are in the Canadian domain which is a little bit of a hike so you got to put on your hiking boots. Right. It's a bit further but it's worth the walk if you're athletic and to be able to come down here. Uh, but we do have another area, our tundra area which focuses on some of our uh, tundra animals including our polar bears. Uh, our arctic wolves and then we also have a pavilion that has some of our smaller species uh, the black-footed ferret being one of them which is wow. a huge conservation program for us they were considered pretty much extinct and we've been working with other organizations to put them back into the wild and now there's viable populations so it's a real success right. story so there's different areas around the zoo that people can see them um, but we definitely have a, a strong representation of Canadian animals obviously Amazing. thank you so much for your time today thank you very much thank you.